Hello friends, this video on data handling part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us see how do we represent data using graphs. So we already learned about pictograph. So here we will talk about a different type of graph that is bar graph. So let's take an example. So let's say this teacher is conducting a survey in the in her class that which fruit is liked by which student and the result or, or the data that she has she interprets the data using a bar graph so what is a bar graph so you see here we make use of rectangular bars so each of these are called bars they are in the shape of a rectangle now what does these bars show the height of the bars actually tell us the number or our data for example on the we have two axes in this case a horizontal axis which is called the x axis and the vertical axis which is called the y axis and the height of these on the horizontal axis we have represented the possible options like the possible options for fruits and on the y-axis we have represented how many students like each of those for example apple apple is liked by 50 students so the height of the graph the height of the bar tells us that 50 students like apple similarly the height of the second bar says 40 that means 40 students like mango the height of the third bar is 30 which says that 30 students like the grapes and so on. So this type of a graph is called a bar graph where we make use of rectangular bars and the height of the bars tell us the numbers which are there in the set of data. You would have seen bar graphs in uh, newspapers like in the news they often give comparative analysis of weather reports like how the weather varied over a period of time or how the weather is different in different cities or different years. So there they make use of graphs. Now in bar graph what we actually do is we need to remember that these rectangular bars are of equal width and equal spacing. This, these are important points to remember. So whenever you draw a bar graph, so all the bars they should be at equal distances from each other and also their width should be the same. The second thing is the length of the bar denote the number, length or height whatever you call it. Like for example if, if you are given this table and you have to draw a bar graph for this. So what you do for the options that is the fruit options you plot them on the x axis and the numbers you plot them on the y axis. Now once you have plotted them then what you do for example for apple it's 50. So you draw a bar such that the height of the bar is still 50. Now when you draw the second bar, please remember that the width of the first bar and the width of the second bar should be the same. In a similar way, when you plot the third bar, you make sure that the width of the third bar also is same as that of the first and second bar. And also the spacing between the first and second should be same as the spacing between the second and third. And this should be same as the spacing between the third and the fourth. So the spacing between two bars should also remain constant and the width of the bar should also remain the same. Now, the most challenging part in a bar graph is to choose the scale. That means here you see that we have very easily wrote these numbers like we have written 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and then here also the numbers are 50, 20, 30, 40 which is like the simplest scenario. Now the question is if we have um, a table where instead of 50 we have something like 1 lakh 50,000. Or if we have a number like 84,000, if we have something like 8,400. So these are bigger numbers. So when we have such big numbers, then how do we plot it on the y-axis? Because if we keep writing 10, 20, 30, 40, so can you imagine when will we reach 1,50,000? So that goes beyond the scope of the paper because on that sheet of paper, you will not have enough space to go till 1 lakh or 1,50,000. So there comes the concept of choosing a scale. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.